A first soft PDF is a PDF editor that has a Mac OS, Windows, and web version. It costs $7.99 per month, $44.99 a year, or $55.99 for three years. That comes to about $18.66 a year if you pay for three years. There is also a free version that lets you try the app before paying for it. And this review will be focusing on the Mac OS version of the app. Fantastic human. Hello, it's Ropsy with Paperless X. To master the use of the apps that we cover on this channel, make sure you head over to our second YouTube channel, Paperless Humans, for both free and paid courses. You can also access them on our website via Patreon. And we even have them on Udemy, if you prefer that. We will have a link to all of that in the description down below. Who else loves them a minimalist, seamless user interface? The icons are not too big, but tiny enough to not scream in your face. The tool and sidebars anchor to the edge of the screen without overlapping with other elements. It is refreshing, and that is the first thing I fell in love with the moment I opened the app. My resolution is making these icons smaller than they are at lower resolution, so if you think they're too small, you can certainly make them a bit bigger. My obsession with minimalism keeps getting worse as I get older, so I really love the user interface in AFSoft PDF. The app supports single-paged and continuous vertical scrolling. You can also view two pages at a time, which would work great with horizontal scrolling but the app doesn't have it. Would that be a deal breaker for you? Do tell. You can even go into full screen mode for an even more minimalist look, but scrolling your pages is tricky because the app doesn't have any navigation buttons for you in full screen mode. A slight movement scrolls through several pages in a split of a second, and that is just difficult to work with. Every PDF reader has annotation tools that allow you to comment and highlight your text in a PDF. With your highlighter tool selected, you can highlight everything that you select in the document, which is the fastest and most efficient way to highlight your text in a PDF. Eversoft PDF has several colors for your highlighter, but you can always use custom ones if you don't like the presets available. You can't edit the preset colors though, and without a way to make custom colors easily accessible, they might be a pain to work with. The preset options are too dark for a highlighter tool, so lighter ones would have made more sense, especially because we can't change them. So let's hope that's something the developers can work on. Even after highlighting, you can still change the color of your highlighter, and they've made that pretty easy to do. The highlighter tool and even selecting text in the app easily recognizes columns in your PDF. What more do you need? Strikeout and underline work exactly the same as the highlighter does, and that is to be expected for PDF annotation. However, the underlines are either too low or simply too high, which is distracting because it just feels like it is either floating in the middle of nowhere or it's just too close to your text. We hope the developers can move this to give us perfect underlining. Because the problem is even worse with the squiggly underline. That one actually covers some of the letters you're trying to underline. Comments need a lot of work in a first soft PDF because we encountered all sorts of bugs when studying and even shooting this review. They require a two-step process where you first have to highlight, underline or strike out something before you can comment on it. There is not an ideal way to comment on anything in a PDF because comments are supposed to be a standalone feature. You shouldn't be forced to do something first before commenting on anything. That just gives you double the work. There are times when commenting on something highlights what you're commenting on, but usually apps automatically do the highlighting for you so you can just concentrate on the commenting. So let's hope that we can have a similar setup in a first soft PDF. Another problem with the comments in the app is that the comment icon covers some letters in your document, 
There seems to be a better place where the common icon can go, either at the beginning of a sentence, below the word, it doesn't matter. But overlapping elements in any productivity app don't give the best user experience. Hovering over your comments will display them on the screen, but you need to open the comment if it is a long one. But the developers have made this a two-step process as well, which it shouldn't be. Clicking or double-clicking tends to open up comments, so we hope to see that added in the future. I love how your comments stick to the edge of your PDF. They look good and you don't have the extra work of having to open each comment. It probably just makes sense never to hide your comments in the app. Stickers are always fun and a Soft PDF has a lot of cute stickers that you can add to your PDF. PDF readers are adding sticker features and it might soon become an industry standard. But without rotation options, they might not be that useful. Stickers are generally low resolution images that are best kept small and this app is no exception to that. You can change the opacity of your sticker. There is not a lot of customization you'd expect for stickers in a PDF editor. But I'm curious to know, how many of you guys enjoy using stickers in a PDF reader? Stamps and signatures would have been more useful to have than stickers in this case. Afrosoft PDF doesn't have both, so that's also something we look forward to seeing in the future. PDF editing is currently limited to text only. The developers are working on editing images as well, which we should expect to see in a month's time. It still does not change the fact that PDF editing is incomplete if we can't edit images in our PDFs. You can remove or add text to your PDF to completely change its contents, and that is the main part of PDF editing. For both the text in the PDF and the one that you add yourself, the app gives you options to change your font, font size, and all the formatting options that you need. I'm happy to see Superscript and Subscript in the app. They're always great to have in a document app. The app also supports all text alignment options. There is not many PDF editing tools in a first soft PDF, which for some optimistic humans justifies the low price tag of the app. But there's also a lot of frustrations the developers need to address to compete with other PDF editors on the market. Like, why are text boxes so difficult to resize? If we're going to edit our PDF, we should have control over how text looks in text boxes. Otherwise, we'll just end up with a bunch of disfigured documents. Search is simple and fast with options to focus on matching the exact word and its case. It will definitely help you narrow your results by a significant margin. But we could use better organization and bigger previews for the results. One phrase is really not enough to decide if you've really found what you're looking for, especially with long documents. It is better to search through your documents without processing them in the app because the search tool on scans is quite good. A first soft PDF could even search through handwritten scans, which was quite impressive. You can select items in your scans to annotate them like you would native PDFs. And that's all you need for working with scans or working on scans in a PDF reader. Given how the app ends up processing your document, you're better off just searching your scan as it is. The OCR is quite accurate and editing your PDF is very good, but it looks nothing like the scan and this is always the case with every PDF editor. So it can either work or not depending on what you're working on. The thumbnail icon looks like an image adding icon, which is a little confusing. You can zoom in on sections of your pages using the thumbnail navigator. I'm not sure how useful that is considering it opens the page on the side. The bigger thumbnails fit fewer pages, but show more details on each page as you navigate through the pages in your PDF. Why do most PDF editors mix bookmarks and outlines? Are they all simply using the same source code? 
I mean, not taking out to separate the two, which makes more organizational sense, no? The advantage of combining the two seems to be that the outline is editable. So it gives you the ability to pretty much change everything about it. You can rename elements. Most of them don't have a problem nesting. And you can even change the destination of an outline item. A for soft PDF lets you change the color and format of your outline item, which is new. I love it because it helps you highlight important pages. You can also increase their font, which is great because the sidebar is resizable. Within limits, of course. The app tracks your annotations and that helps you go through them faster. You can even filter to focus on different types of annotations and colors. Your annotations are very easy to find in a Microsoft PDF. We hope to see something like that for the search tool in the app because that would really just make it more useful. The strangest thing about the app though is that it does not recognize or navigate hyperlinks. For a PDF editor in 2024, that is simply unacceptable. Normally, we would be expecting to create new hyperlinks. It's one of the main features users expect to find in a PDF editor, where you can actually create hyperlinks, not have to worry about failing to navigate already existing ones. The developers have made page selection easy with options to select specific pages with a single click. You can choose to only focus on odd portrait or landscape pages when editing your pages in the PDF. You can rotate your pages, which also rotates your annotations as is to be expected. You can resize the page thumbnails and the app has an option for you to extract pages. I love that you have control over how your pages are extracted and what happens afterwards. You can export your pages as separate files or there is an option to extract PDFs and documents, but there's also an option to export and the developers seem to have combined the two, which is a bit confusing. Cropping removes part of the PDF you don't like. Enlarging your pages would have been great though. You can manually do it to see what you're removing in real time or you can just use the numbers in the pop-up window. And in this instance, I only applied this to the current page, but you can choose which pages you want this to apply to. Surprisingly though, we can't add new blank pages to our PDFs in a Microsoft PDF. I haven't seen a document app without this feature for years now. If you ever wanted to take notes or add a blank page to your PDFs, you can't do that in a Microsoft PDF. As a general rule, I don't have a lot of positive things to say about AI, but I appreciate that it is optional so you don't have to use it and I don't. But occasionally for a review, of course, I have to try it because that's what Paperless X is about, trying and evaluating digital tools. The AI tool in a of PDF can't index every document you throw at it. I just have a lot of columned textbooks for science subjects. So those don't really seem to work well with AI in the app. Um, so I had to dig into my archives to get a PDF with a simpler structure. So that's already a limitation you'll probably encounter. Like with every other AI tool, you must scratch your head, try several times to ask something and still get the wrong response. That's an AI issue, it's not an AFSoft PDF issue. And I just believe it wastes more time than it saves. But let me know if you found AI useful in your daily work, especially for PDF reading. I like that it has a text-like look and feel, so you can easily tell your prompts and questions from the responses. But without a way to give back any feedback to the AI, it feels better to simply read through your PDF document yourself. Then again, someone must train the AI, right? You're not just limited to importing PDFs in a Microsoft PDF. You can convert Word, PowerPoint, and image documents into PDF. It should automatically just do this without having a special tool for it. It's better than not having the feature at all.
The opposite of this feature would be to convert PDF to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, image. And most of these formats are not difficult to convert at all. Most PDF editors do them just fine, but very few apps can convert to Excel, which is why I use it as a litmus test. If the app can convert this, then the conversion feature is brilliant and a first off PDF passed the test, which is fantastic because a lot of PDF editors mess this up. Unique to a soft PDF is the ability to convert to rich text format, EPUB, EPUB is definitely a new one, and text, which is probably plain text. That one is not such a big deal. Definitely EPUB conversion is new and very interesting, and it makes the app stand out if that's ever been a format you wanted to convert to. You can also convert multiple documents at once, which is to be expected, and this makes the conversion feature the first complete and functional feature we have encountered in a Microsoft PDF. The organization in the app is simple and functional, which is always great to have. Those two words in the same sentence, very rare to find. You can open documents from any location on your MacBook edit or annotate it and save the changes without bringing the document into the app. I love that type of organization for PDF editors and PDF readers because this allows you to have a central location for your PDFs and work on them using different apps on different devices. If you want to sync your documents within the app, you have to upload them to the cloud and work on them from there. You can access cloud storage online to download your documents, but it's not the same as using the storage like you would OneDrive Dropbox, for example. The app can organize your documents into folders and supports an infinite level of folders within folders. You can view them as thumbnails or lists, but searching is limited to your document titles. Even then, it's not very accurate because it missed a few titles. The app doesn't search the contents of your PDFs from the homepage, so we hope that the developers will add universal search in the future. You can start documents for easier access, and it is another complete and functional feature in the app. PDF editing in a first soft PDF is too basic, and I can't help but feel the developers launched the app a bit too early. Some features we can understand, but others like adding blank pages, navigating hyperlinks, and editing images are inexcusable. If all you care about is editing a few sentences in your PDF and don't really use much else, maybe you can consider getting the app. Given how much work the developers have put into the user interface, I have hope that they will be adding all the other features soon, because they've really put a lot of effort into the aesthetics of the app which makes it a future-proof design. What do you guys think about a soft PDF? Is it a PDF editor you would want to try? Do tell. Thank you, Fantastic Human, for watching. See you in the next video.